Javier Guan, welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where we talk everything about your favorite movies, actors and actresses. I'm Ken Sinicos. I'm joined with uh, by my colleagues Asha, Jason, Hello. and Uncle Ken. Hello. Hey, hey, hey. And we have an interesting topic today. Uh, we're going to talk about the body of work that is Keanu Reeves' career. So, Jace. Interesting how you say body of work because he's generally seen... He's always been seen as such a sex symbol, and yet it's his voice that that kind of carries him and also incriminates him. Huh. Wow. Whoa. Wow. No, and think, of, wow. think of how many signature quotes came out of Keanu Reeves' mouth over the years, and everybody just associates it. You know, they think he's like this dumb California kid who will always be, you know, Bill S. Preston from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. It's true. Sure. I mean, that's, a, that's the movie that broke him. I was just going to say, like, I was going through this list, and I saw that, I was like, that's right. That Wait, who's the, who's the so head? Um, Scott Winter. That, oh. Yeah. The yeah, only, he kind of looks like Sean Penn, you know? There, no, he does kind of look like Sean Penn. Him, yeah. he, he's got, like, bug eyes, but uh, he was His also, nose. he was yeah. also in The Lost Boys. He was one of the, he was one of The Lost Boys. Oh. And I think that was the only other movie he did, but he, he's also in that documentary that was on Netflix, the one, um, Electric Boogaloo, about all the, uh, all the B-movies from uh, Golden Globus. So who would have thought, though, that Keanu Reeves in 1989 would go on to have the career that he's had over, you know, that time frame, 30 years? He's had some... Okay, I, I do know for a fact that he is universally respected in, in the acting community, like in Hollywood, as being a re really legitimate actor. He takes the craft very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. But his roles have been very polarizing. When, when he's good and when he's on, he's really, really good. He's been an action star. He's been a drama star. He's been a comedy star. And yet he's got, you know, these missteps. Like when he did Bram Stoker's Dracula, he was terrible in that. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, yeah, there's some roles the English, that he, just, he misses. He was and what's in crazy Dracula? Is, yeah. yeah, he was in Dracula. He was Jonathan Harker. And what's crazy is... Oh, I was only one year old, though. Oh, you, you were one year old? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that movie's probably, probably inappropriate for a one-year-old. But um, Winona Ryder... Was great in that movie, even with a fake English her. accent. I know right. She's, She's so, so cool. beautiful. Yeah. Wasn't that his wife at one time, or they had a relationship? I well, I don't know. Johnny Depp and her. But they have they oh, have a Johnny movie Depp. together. Yeah. Winona Ryder and Keanu Reeves has a have a movie together, uh, where they both play single. Um, they're single people, and they go to a wedding, and I guess like Keanu Reeves knows the husband, the groom, and uh, Winona Ryder knows the bride, and they kind of hook up there. What is that movie called? Destination Wedding. Okay, and basically we, we printed out for everybody watching like on the YouTube feed that's not listening to us on the K-Ram Podcast Network, Keanu Reeves' filmography is... 60 plus films. Yeah, on Wikipedia, this is four whole pages. Yeah, that's... Eight and a half by 11 paper. And if you're wondering why we decided to talk about Keanu Reeves today... Um, it's because he's uh, awesome. John Wick 3 uh, is going to come out this year, 2019. It's slated to be released later this year. Um, and Ed, we're, we're not going to talk about 60 films that Keanu Reeves did today. We're just going to go through our favorites or notable failures or, you know, peaks that uh, he hit in his career. We talked about Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Um, classic. And I, and I'm going to go with uh, my classic pick here, like one of the best Keanu Reeves movies. Oh, God, what? I, I feel like I know what you're going to say. You know, right <laughs> Point Break. Point Ooh. freaking Break. Yeah. Catherine Bigelow, direct, like that's before, yep. before Hurt Locker, before she did Hurt Locker yep. back in the day. James Cameron's ex-wife. Yep. And they mm -hmm. did Point Break, which is a story about Johnny Utah, who, who's a new FBI agent, right? He's like a rookie FBI agent. And that literally was his lie. Oh, yeah. I lie. am an <laughs> FBI agent! And see, he was he was still playing Bill from Bill and Ted, and everybody's like, dude, this guy's dumb. It's like, no, it's, he's kind and of then, uh, he, um, But he was a lawyer. Where, where were they at? California? Yeah, they were in California. So uh, he has Zuma, to actually. infiltrate a group of surfers um, because there's all like a string of burglaries and things happening, in, you know, across the the, the state, and uh, they think that it's linked to uh, you know a bunch of surfers, right? So they, they link it to the area. So he has to learn how to surf. Lori Petty's in the movie. Gary <laughs> Busey's in the movie. Lori Petty, man. And that was just such a like for the when was this 1991, right? Yep. Yeah, like for the time, it was just such. A hit and cool 
film. And you know what's amazing? And it stands the test of time. You, you've mentioned so many people in the cast, including you know a, a cameo in the Surf Crew oh, and, by know, Anthony we, Kiedis of Red Hot Chili Peppers. And we didn't mention mm -hmm. Patrick, Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze, I was just going to yeah. say. So, I, The skydiving is insane. I mean, you, sky, you really skydive without a pack. Legit. Second best skydive, second best skydiving scene in, in a movie. I would love to hear the first one. Drop Zone, Wesley Snipes. Ooh, that's that's good. You guys hear that? I, I, I gotta, you guys I gotta hear that? Not that's knowledge good. being dropped. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that point blank. That's that's, that's like that's man. That's in my top three. Okay, can we can we finally just say it? Is or is not. Fast and the Furious, a complete ripoff, just transposed yes. to cars and, with Point Break. Almost, you have not, yes. you have not agreed with me on this in the past. Yes, I, I, it is, it is pretty much. Well, I, you know, I don't know. I can without die a happy giving, man now. Without giving too many spoilers, uh, you know the, the conflict is slightly different, okay. right? Because it's not just uh, camaraderie. Are we gonna spoil it? The ex president. Are, are, are we spoiling it? We, no, no. We, point, point Break is a fantastic movie, and Keanu was great in that. He was, and so was Patrick Swayze. <laughs> who do you think? Who do you think was better in that though? I think I think Swayze kind of stole the show. Keanu was good. Yeah, Swayze was amazing. Yeah, yeah, he stole the show, except for the end. But you know everything. Like have that you watched either Point Break? Such a, yeah, have you watched I feel either? Like I have. The original or the remake? The, the remake you said was not good. What was the re? The there remake was, was okay. Okay. They, they were they were doing like those flying squirrel suits, right? The in the remake, they the guy has to do I forgot what they call it. The but Seven Wonders or something is that the one? There, yeah, there are a bunch of challenges oh, that he has to do. Geez. Like you have I'll to face the dive then, into a hole. Because like, when you were talking like, about it, I was like, wait, I know I watched this movie, but Keanu wasn't in it. Yeah. No, I never watched the original. Yeah, the original, the original kills to. the remake. Like okay. that's that's something you definitely. I mean, his do. name too. It's you know you you, you can go Keanu by in your stuff. entire career with just the name Keanu. Everybody knows who you're talking about. There was a movie called Keanu, and he was in it by uh, Keegan Michael Key, right? Uh, Key and Peele. Hmm. Is that the dog movie? Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, so moving on. Um, dog movie. Okay, Point Break, definite five. You know, he did a bunch of other movies, right? We got like Much Ado About Nothing. Um, Wait, can we can we back up first? Because he, be, before he, uh, let me make sure I get the, the chronology right. Before he did uh, Point Break, obviously he did Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Uh, My Own Private Idaho, who he was in with the late River Phoenix. He was really good in that. Uh, kind of a risk as an actor because they played two gay men. Uh, but My Own Private Idol is a great, great film. Actually, no, I have not, I've never watched that movie. Yeah, the box cover is the, the two of them like uh, on, a, on a motorcycle, just going like across you know, like the, the flatlands of like Kansas or something. Like really? That's a really good movie. Really powerful performances by both those guys. Wow. Never, I've it's never a good movie. That. Well, how about this one? Speed. <laughs> Speed turned him into a legit action star I, I think point break turned him into a legit action star but speed was like, like okay up. he's hyped up let's put him on the top billing Sandra Bullock okay oh, yeah that, that's Sandra Sandra Bullock. Bullock. what is speed right? so Jason can you tell Asha what speed is okay because when I think of Sandra Sandra Bullock and Keanu I think of that other movie speed 2 no, no, she was not. In, she was not in part no, two. No, he was not in part two. Do you know what movie Jason I'm talking Patton. about, right? Do you know what movie I'm talking about? There's another movie where they like. Really? They, is it like something with time or something? A walk to remember? No, not a walk to remember. Oh. I'm gonna find it <coughs> here. I think it. Okay, is. our millennial uh, movie critic is gonna look this up. But yeah, well, so while that happens, speed. Why don't you give up? The Lake House. Oh, oh yeah, the, that's right. Good call. Ash. Right, okay, See? the old the old guys completely in your face. Yeah, we completely screwed the pooch on that one. All right, Speed. I thought, but again, he was really good in Speed. He was really buff in Speed. He was, he was no not really buff in. Speed. He was big. Speed. Oh my I God. never remember Keanu Reeves being big. Yeah, because he never was. Big. But but again, He's like a skinny was. dude. Would you say? I I mean, you can kind of make the argument that much. And Jeff, uh, <coughs> what's his name? Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels. Yeah, and um. Uh, Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper, yeah, thank you. I almost said Toby Hooper, but no, that's the director. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, too. Um, much in the same way as in Point, where Point Break, he was really, really good, but he got outshined by Patrick Swayze. You can kind of say that as good as he was in Speed, he got outshined by Sandra Bullock. Because prior to that, Sandra Bullock had only done The Net, which he was okay in, and... <laughs> I watched right. Speed. You did? You did watch yeah. Okay. Well, what did, he, what did Dennis Hopper call it? <coughs> wildcat or something? Your Wildcat, because he saw she had the University of Arizona <laughs> thing. You tell that Wildcat over there, she's good. She's a bus driver, right? Yeah, they're on, yeah. The, they're on the bus. And she did Love Potion number nine. 
That was Sandra Bullock. That was Sandra Bullock and Tate Donovan, who she was actually dating at the time. Uh, but yeah, but but this this movie, everybody was like, wow, she's sweet, she's genuine, she's America's sweetheart, you know, and she kind of stole the show, I thought, as good as Keanu was. And that made him a legit action movie star because he was the hero. And it really was a fun movie. That was a pretty... It was. Right? It was, I, it was, just, it was just so cool. That Speed had you on the edge of your seat. Did you see Speed time. in the theater? I did. Yeah, 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 it was awesome. Yeah. I, I was I was gripping like the seats because I was like, okay, you have to keep the bus going. 50, remember that, Al? You have to keep the bus she going 50 miles per yeah. hour. That was so funny. And then when the bus is like, there's that old li- like lady pushing, or no, with the uh, the baby carriage, mm-hmm. oh. and it was like, oh, and they slammed into it, but it was all just like a bunch of cans because <laughs> it was like a homeless person pushing. I was like, oh man. Okay, after that, how about uh, the Devil's Advocate? Oh yeah, one of our favorites. That's a that that is an office favorite, man. Uh, by office, you mean the two of us. Uh, Theron, right? Short, short, yeah, short, Charlize short. Theron. Okay, once again, I can say that as good as Keanu is in these movies, whether he sets himself up to be, you know, like they say in pro wrestling, it's not how good you make yourself look, it's how good you make your okay, opponent look. Okay, let's, I'm gonna... When you, when you have Charlize Theron, Academy Award winner, I don't think she had won at that, no, she won for Monster, which was a couple years later, but Pacino, come on, I mean, that's, that's hard to do. You know, I actually think all the acting in that movie was actually was bad, but I thought the story was really good. Yeah. I thought it even was by really Pacino. Yeah, I, th- I thought it was way, way. We're way coming out of there. <laughs> I, th- I think Pacino was just having a good time doing that movie. Yeah, he, we're giving a quit him left or a quit him. We're gonna burn the whole thing down. Yeah. Hua. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. I watched this too. <laughs> but that was that was a great movie. Uh, um, Keanu Reeves. Spoiler alert, everybody. A, Al Pacino is the devil. A lawyer, a defense lawyer. A southern defense lawyer. Who with has the, never had a loss. With the his, worst southern accent in exactly. the history. And that's what I'm saying. That's how you're acting. And, and it's not just southern. He's, he's from Gainesville, Florida. Oh, baby. But, uh, yeah. Charlize so. Theron, who is South African, pulled off the, su- the, <laughs> the, the southern Georgia, yeah. northern Florida accent. Well, Keanu could not, who is an American. Oh, you know, whatever. But uh, Keanu, he played a lawyer who never lost, and he gets recruited by a big firm. Uh, so they move to a more what was it New York? They moved to New York. Yeah, right? New York. And then uh, has the most insane brownstone apartment given to him. Yeah, and Al Pacino is his boss, and it's uh, pretty crazy to see where that movie goes, um, like the things that he does to keep the winning record and. Pretty. And he basically never loses because vanity is his sin, and he goes, "I refuse to lose." Yeah, I and mean, be- without spoiling too much, you can watch this on all streaming platforms, I believe. Yeah, it's on Netflix right now yeah, because so. I, I have basically. And he gets pretty crazy. Like, there, there's some psycho stuff that happens in that movie. <laughs> that's all. That's an all right movie. Yeah, it's pretty good. Who knew that movie came out? I that remember. Was- remember the key. Do you remember the bit of scripture that that his mother, the old Southern Belle, told him? Oh, when, I when forgot. It, I forgot. He, he's walking away. He's like, because Charlize Theron, his wife, has just mm-hmm. taken her own life, and you know, like he's walking through there, and she's like, "Spoilers." Yeah, and she's like, <laughs> "She's like, you can't go back there." He's like, and he's like, "Mama, I can't handle this right now." He's like, no, I send thee out before the wishing, before the wolves. And like he turns around, he's like, "Wait a minute." <laughs> so the devil is my father. I mean, what, what, what's something to be put upon your conscience? It's like, okay, I lost my first case. My wife, who I love, is no longer here. Oh, and by the way. The devil is my dad. And my mom, who I thought was this pristine church-going lady, screwed around on a church retreat. Yeah. What a terrible way to spend a Monday. So spoiler. And that's the spoiler. That's the Warning, movie. spoiler. We spoiled the entire movie. The movie you, came out in 1995. You know, if you have not seen it by this <laughs> point, that's on you. So after that, you know, how about The Matrix? Wait, did he not do anything between... No, he did other movies. We're just skipping Not those junkies. Not in the Devil's Advocate. Okay, Devil's Advocate. Johnny Mnemonic. Trash. Chain jo- Reaction. Trash. You, you did not like jo- jo- Johnny Mnemonic was an alright movie. Trash. Johnny Mnemonic. Well, you know, it was nominated for an award, Jason. According to this, it says the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst <laughs> Actor. The Razzie! Oh, <laughs> sh- Shucks. Worst Actor. Did, did you want to talk about any of these movies in between Speed and... Uh, uh, apparently uh, not. I mean, him. okay, he's he's done. He um, he did some drama between that and the Matrix. Yeah, yeah. And the Matrix was ninety nine. Yeah. 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 The Matrix was awesome. The I special the effects, all actually, that no, was crazy. I'm sorry, I, I stand corrected. You were absolutely right. He did the Devil's Advocate in ninety seven, and then he did the Matrix in ninety nine. Oh, I thought you meant between Speed and the Matrix. Oh, okay. oh wow. But, but yeah, okay. um, 
Mr. Mr. Anderson. How awesome was that, right? Story of Neo. What is he, like a hacker? Yeah. He's like a hacker, and then he finds out, well, Lawrence Fishburne, Morpheus, helps him find out that uh, the mm -hmm. world that we live in is not the reality of what we are really in. We're actually all prisoners to a bunch of machines, and we live in a virtual reality. And It's Plato's allegory of the cave. And then basically. he just try, um, you know, so Neo is, quote unquote, the one. And he has to figure out whether or not this new reality is the true reality and whether he is the promise, like, soul that is supposed to uh, save all these people or save humanity. And I will say, the for the first, for the, maybe for the first time in his career, because Lawrence Fisherman was good in this movie, Joe Pantoliano, Joey Pants was good in this movie as Cypher. Cypher. Yeah. Carrie Ann Moss, this, this movie really broke her, and she, I mean, she had marginal success after this but but he really was the star he really shown in in the three matrix movies as the yeah. guy mm -hmm. he did he did it was awesome and like all the build-up of the first movie to the one scene where you know he uh, hugo weaving was in there is hugo weaving, Smith? one of the best un most underrated actors in today i think but uh yeah that was an incredible he's not series. a game of thrones right what, wait what has he been in recently how many matrix movies hugo weaving? yeah well, he's in cloud house there's three matrix movies. oh but he was he was in lord of the rings yeah, he was a an elf guy. No, but he was he was the dad the dad of a uh, Steven Tyler's daughter, of yeah. Liv Tyler. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But that was awesome. That was awesome. Matrix was awesome. Okay. One of my favorite. Would you Would you guys say sure. that the special effects in the Matrix, the original Matrix movie, like with the bullet time and everything like that, does that hold up today? Because they don't. I, because I've heard that film students who are in college right now they watch the Matrix like their teachers like show them. It's like okay, this is a uh, this is an amazing effect that you guys have to see and have to know as you're in your study of film history. And they all kids look at it and they laugh and they're like, God, this is crap. But I, I remember crap, everybody freaked out in '99 when this came out. I thought like, it was amazing. That? And like the way they had to shoot it was amazing too, right? Like the the 360 effect they actually yeah. had to have mm -hmm. 60 cameras shoot. You know, each camera shot one frame sequentially, right? Like, you were like in middle school when this came out, right, Ash? When did it come out? Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Oh, I was in middle school. Yeah, I was in elementary. Did you Did you watch it like when it came, like when it got on TV, or when you watched it? I on can't video? even remember, but I know I watched it. Mm. That was such an incredible. Like, everything was incredible that movie, and it's it's crazy to think how far we've gone in twenty years or eighteen years since the movies come out, like in terms of special effects and mm -hmm. technology. And not to necessary be, to shoot those types of shots. Right? Not to jump too far ahead, but when you say based on the success of the Matrix series, would you say this was his apex of his career? Did he, did he ever get any higher than he was? Yes. In Matrix? Because at this he point, he has gotten higher than he. He was a A list celebrity star. I mean, he was. We don't mention him because we talked about in this podcast who the greatest American actors are at this point, and we mention Tom Hanks, Tom Cruise, um, and not even American, just you know, like Christian Bale, Russell Crowe, uh, things like that. We, no one ever mentions Keanu Reeves. Yeah, because he's not the greatest American actor, then, nor is one. Of, is he Man, one of he the greatest? So but he was the most likable, the most likable American. Actor. Well, that, that's good. Like, you know what that's I mean? That's good. Like, I like that. Because you know that some of the acting's like you know devil's advocate. Like we said, it's it's pretty suspect. Like the the <laughs> accent is just so unbelievable. You don't like I Kevin Lomax? I don't really care for him as an actor, to be honest. But he's so likable. I, I would love to hear why. Please, please. I just. I don't know. I guess I've never really cared for the movies that he was in. Like he's he's not like a standout actor to me. All right. That's just my opinion. Is, is he not? Is it not like? Like no, he had some. It's really basically good because his his he, first. No, I, I, no I, I get it. All these movies that he's done, and I probably only like a couple of them. Like. Actually, I think that's BS. It's because he's not Australian. His first name's not Chris, and his last name's not Hemsworth. So no, 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 no. Oh, but by, by the way, I found something. Did you know that Chris Hemsworth has his own uh, podcast series about vegan cooking now? Are you what? serious? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna yeah. send you the Facebook. I am in love. There's no way he's more. vegan. He, he is. Vegan. What? Yeah. Holy cow. I think. I, I, I should share that with you to. You know. I'm not a stalker. And you'll probably like never come into work again. You'll just be like at home all day. I might go join his podcast, guys. All right. How about how about the replacements, Jason? Okay. This, if you, if I can make like a little Shakespearean kind of a comparison here, when you keep in mind what he did in the replacements, this brought about an interesting, you know. An argument within an argument, right? The play within the play, like sure. they say in Hamlet. Sure. So now, who was the greatest quarterback that Keanu Reeves ever played? You have Point Break in 91. Johnny, Johnny, Utah. Johnny Utah, the golden arm quarterback of the Ohio State Buckeyes. And they say in the movie, he played for Ohio State. And the, yeah, I was doing really good in the Rose Bowl before my, my knee got bent back 90 degrees. 
First of all, for your knee to get bent back 90 degrees, you could be like Adrian Peterson and have your ACL and MCL both blow up, and that still would not be as bad as if your knee bends backwards 90 degrees. I mean, think of, ugh! I can't. I can't. Dude, you wouldn't even be able to walk anymore. Yeah, but now you are just pretending that you are some kind of doctor or podiatrist. That I, no, I, I don't. Podiatrist? Foot, right? Yeah, well, I was talking about the knee, but okay, point taken. Um, okay, so anyway, and he he he, so he he played for Ohio State. He beat USC in the Rose Bowl, which when you be, when you beat the Trojans in their own backyard, is no small accomplishment. Or do you take Shane Falco, the redeemed quarterback, and the replacement? Did he challenge USC? Did Johnny Youth challenge USC? Or you just no? He beat USC in the Rose Bowl. They said, but that's that's when his knee got blown blown mm-hmm. out. So that was in you know, but Shane Falco, who was a phenomenal quarterback, but then what, he took a bet or he. he he played for the better, something like that. I don't but know he came what back. Shane Falco. But. Well, the Replacements was a great movie. It was cool. I wouldn't say it was a good, great movie. It was a great sports movie. It's a good sports movie. It was a fun movie. But again, it Gene, was a good Gene Hackman movie. blew yeah. him out of the water. Yeah. He was good. Gene Hackman was better. And I don't. Yeah. So I don't know if this is something that he just does as a setup guy to make his co-stars succeed, or he just has the. Misfortune of being cast with you know superior actors. I don't know. Maybe maybe the roles like you know even though the lead roles the character doesn't really develop that much and you know maybe the script. And the replacement was like a straight up comedy. Cast. Yeah, it was funny. It you was you a had good movie. one of the, one of the funniest Actually, guys. It was a good movie. Was Bill, Bell- Bill Bellamy wasn't in that movie? Was no, it? Bill Bellamy was uh, any given Sunday. It was okay. Or- who was Orlando the, Jones? But they had the deaf guy, right? Or, yeah, uh, the tight end. That was, so or, who is the better quarterback? Orlando Jones, was, and he did like oh. "I Will Survive" and and know. the kicker. They had a like Irish kicker or something. Yeah, like a soccer player. And, or and he took and he, he <laughs> took bits. Yeah, he took and, the and, Yeah, and the IRA was coming out. That was him. so dumb. What a dumb. And, and he smoked while he was kicking. That was so funny. Okay, um, yeah. So so who, who the better quarterback was, based on what I saw, when he did that rollout, and I mean they were only playing seven on seven flag football on the beach, but based on the way that he did that bootleg and he rolled out. And how he shook off defenders, and that was way more athletic than what he did with like as Shane Falco. Okay. Shane Falco, he had that one stiff arm when he actually like when he ran for the touchdown, and then like the big Japanese like sumo guy like was called for offside. Can you tell I've watched these movies a few times? I can definitely, yeah. Like I, I can't believe we're even debating watched. like whether the fictional Johnny Utah is a better quarterback than the fictional Shane Falco. Go on the web, my friend. This is a thing. That's crazy. People debate. People like me who have equally no lives. We'll talk all right, moving this. on. We're going to skip all the other Matrix. <laughs> so Johnny Matrixes. Utah was, was the We're better We're skipping all the other Matrixes. You know, it was a pretty good series, uh, even though maybe it doesn't stand the test of time. How about Constantine? That was a good movie. You like Constantine? I know, I know Constantine? I've watched that. Right. I, okay, I want to say again, and I'm, I'm trying not to be biased between towards Keanu, but he was good. Um, who was the kid? Mm. There's a kid in the movie. Yeah, um, from the uh, from the first Transformers movie. Why can't I? Weird name. Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf was good. I don't remember in that movie. Yeah. Rachel Vice was better. She's so pretty. Tilda Swinton was it? Tilda Swinton in that movie. Tilda Swinton was the Archangel Gabriel. Yeah, she looked crazy. In that no, no, movie. that was a wild. <laughs> no, Rachel, movie. Rachel Vice is, re- and you know who her husband is, right? No. James Bond. Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig. Yeah. Daniel Craig. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good movie. I liked it. I liked Constantine. I thought it was pretty interesting. Okay, as, as a comic book guy, I, I did not. I never read Constantine. It, I didn't it, read it. Oh, okay, because I, I was gonna say, does it stay true to the comic book though? Okay. It was pretty interesting. I didn't know it was a comic. All it was right, one of, one of the four comics. And then we came to. So I don't know. You know, Keanu at that point, he's probably already hit the pinnacle of his career, and he's done a bunch of other, like, not great movies. Wait, so so you would say going back to what we were talking about earlier, that The Matrix is the yeah. pinnacle. Yeah. Okay, so the Matrix was his apex. The first apex. I think he's got a resurgence with career now that we have John Wick, mm-hmm. which okay. is like between Constantine and which was two thousand five to twenty fourteen, like all these other movies. Uh, I could. Did you guys forget. watch the day the Earth stood? I watched that movie. That was trash. <laughs> that was a that was a trash movie. What about Forty Seven Ronin? Didn't you like that? No, I, I didn't watch that. That was oh. a trash movie too. That was horrible. I don't know half more than half. That of is a gar- that is horrible. That movie is horrible. Henry's Crime, that one was bad. All of the Scanner Darkly is pretty good. The Lake House Scanner wasn't Darkly a bad is actually movie. That right, one was okay. Well, talk, talk about that. Speak no, on that. let's not talk about no. it. It was a 
It's it was not that okay. okay. <laughs> it was okay. It wasn't that good. But it's it not like okay, an action movie. It's more like a slow... It's a, It has a slow storyline to it. You know what I can see? And you guys are going to laugh me off the podcast for this. If he had been a little bit younger, I think Tiana would have been better in The Notebook than Ryan Gosling was. No. 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 Hell no. You don't think so? It was what, no. what, what do you think Tiana's most emotional roles have been? Like where he... Because I, I can't even name one role where I thought he played, a, you know, he showed a lot of depth and range as an actor. Uh, when he was in Parenthood. Okay. Um, he was supposed to be... Watch the lake house. <laughs> okay, okay, why? Why, why, is, why, is that, why is that emotional? Because it's not, I don't know, it's just not an action movie, so he's like a more serious role. I don't know. You just have to watch it, Jason. Oh, because that, that's that's how it. I feel about like Parenthood. Because you know he was he was the dumbass guy that that took the daughter you know away, and she fell in love with him, and you know all he wanted to do was just race cars in the local um, stock circuit. And yet when uh, her mom went up to him and said, you know, like uh, you have to take care of my daughter, he's like, you know, you can teach a man to fish. You can teach a deer how to hunt. But they'll let anybody. No, I'm sorry. I completely screwed up line. Here it is. I'm, you know, you need a license to drive. You need a license to catch fish. You even need a license to shoot a deer. But they'll let anybody be a dad, man. That's the line. And then, end scene. And, and, and then when she does that, Diane Weiss, who's the mom, she's like, wow, this is my, this is my, this is the father of my grandchild. And she's like, he's really not that dumb. He's insightful. I mean, he's not a genius, but. You sound pretty dumb. Jeez, man. Wow. <laughs> wow. No? Nah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't sell you on that one? Okay. But I, that was a good you movie, though. You can see in a minute. <laughs> that was a great movie, Darren though. Darren Hood, yeah. Yeah. Is that a Steve, uh... I don't think Steve I watched Martin? that one. Steve Martin. Not yeah. Steve Harvey. Yeah, it was... Yeah. Steve Martin, Jason Robards. Yeah, that was a good movie. Yeah. Is that Sally? Oh, it was I a Sally. I wonder why I didn't watch it. Diane Weiss. Oh, Diane Weiss. All right, but how about John Wick? John Wick is the I've movie not seen that really John, you guys got the John revitalized his career. So he is a killer, like an assassin. And I don't remember when the wife died. Like I don't know if it was like previous, but it the whole premise of the script is he's like a lonely guy. So he has a dog, a little puppy, right? Oh, and I think crap. the dog. I, I think can't he empathize. had the dog when the uh, he got yeah, the dog when the, the wife died anything. or something, or it was a gift for the wife, and the wife died, was killed. So he raised this dog, and his then dog was basically his child. Yeah, and then, uh, any dog lover would know. Which like, you are. People break into his house, or they're trying to. I I don't remember, but they kill the dog, right? And this is like what happens in the beginning of the movie, and uh, he goes. His car, and then no yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and then and then he just goes on a killing spree after that. But like, uh, like you know. He has weekly so, so this killer. is like Death Wish over a dog? Kinda, yeah, kinda. I guess, yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's going vigilante be- because of the loss Revenge. of his pet. Yeah. Yeah. Revenge. Yeah. And, and I heard it's ultra violent. It is, and oh, it's yeah. got, you know, it's uh, adapted off of like a lot of traditional Southeast Asian action films where it's like a lot of hand to hand combat mm-hmm. and violent, there's a lot of like knife fighting and guns, and, mm-hmm. and, and it does it. Pretty well. It actually uh, makes that transition uh, pretty efficiently. And I, man, I thought John Wick's a pretty cr- fun movie. And now we have John Wick Two that came out. That was pretty good too. And, and then the John Wick Three one. this year. So. Okay, let me let me ask you guys a theoretical or hypothetical question, right? If you were to paint Keanu Reeves into a particular corner, and you say he can, he's only one type of actor: action, adventure, romance, sports. Dramatic, like whatever. How do you classify Keanu Reeves as as an actor, as a bestie? Action and adventure. Yeah. You need the role with the less, the least amount of development for the main character. You know what I mean? Just like a real s- solid, consistent type of presence. You know. And I think that's interesting because I was gonna say if, if it were up to me, I would say comedy. I think he's done action adventure, but there's all there's always like that element of yeah he's done comedy, but I don't think he was even that funny in any of it. It's just like irritating. Have you never watched Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? 
I will buy you. I the watched it and I thought it was a funny movie, but his accent in it is annoying. I got more annoyed. San Dimas High School football rules. Yeah, well, I, maybe in his younger ones it was okay, but like when you didn't like Socrates, Socrates, Socrates. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, he says know. he loves San Dimas. <laughs> That's so dumb. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's and they go back. They go back in time to France. Oh, nice to you. Excuse me, uh, Mrs. of Arc. <laughs> they find Joan of Arc, Mrs. of Arc. <laughs> So Did they take them off to the mall and Joan of Arc is like leading the, the ja- Joan of Arc is leading the jazzer side. Freaking Napoleon is like doing like playing Risk in the battles. Man, you gotta watch a movie that's like not thirty years old. Like at least. Oh, dude, wait at a least minute. We, from two thousand. We have not said. Century. We have not said the best line from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. The one that we always laugh at. What? It's like Bill, Ted, I made you guys some cookies. <laughs> Thanks, Missy. <laughs> I mean, mom. I mean, mom. <laughs> like, the dude, remember when she was in our class last year? Shut up, Ted. <laughs> and now your dad banging her. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Thanks, Missy. I mean, you know, I, I, have we exhausted <laughs> all the? Uh... <laughs> so Are we exhausted? All so, so you got you guys would say okay. Best three Keanu Reeves movies. Ooh, and we'll we'll one. start with you because you you are. This, is your show, so obviously, we, uh, man, what am I gonna say... pick? Okay, well, I'm gonna say point, uh, point break for sure. Point break is up there. The Matrix, it's uh, not Bram Stoker's Dracula, that's for damn sure. Man, John Wick, John Wick or Speed. I don't know. I, 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 I give it to John Wick, John Wick 2. Yeah, so John Wick 2. Matrix. Point break, point and break, the matrix, the and, first matrix. and the first one. Okay, go ahead, Ash. Well, I haven't watched that many movies from him, but I did watch John Wick, The Matrix, and those are obviously his top two movies. Um, for the third one, I don't know. I might say Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. You're good. Just because it was hilarious. Okay, Uncle Ken. John Wick. The original one, right? Yeah. Good question. Yes. Oh, what? Wow. Well, oh, he only has a top one. One and done. Nice. Okay, I'm I'm gonna say Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I'm gonna say the replacements because he was he was good in the replacements, even though that, that probably wasn't his best movie. Um. Jason's like I watched that movie like ten times. Okay, and, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of like bend the rules like a little bit. There's a documentary that he actually produced and hosted called Side by Side, where he interviews all these other directors from Hollywood and talks about like the old style of shooting on film and cellulose versus now doing everything digitally. He interviews Scorsese, he interviews Robert Rodriguez, you know, Quentin Tarantino. And it is really, really good because he's got all these connections in Hollywood and he just says, okay, how is, he interviews, who's the guy who directed Ken, um, uh, 40 Days and 40 Nights and 28 Days Later? Danny. Uh... The British guy. Yeah, I forgot his name. Yeah, but he interviews him and he said just the, the liberty of being able to shoot on digital and he said if we did this like on film it would, it would have taken us a month and if we don't get like the perfect shot at the certain type of day and it was a really good documentary if you guys have not seen side by side watch side by side and you really see the true Keanu Reeves a, a student of film someone who loves the practice of, of making movies and you know it really gives you a sense of appreciation for his talent because he's not just the dumb guy from all of, you know all the movies that preceded the matrix you know and he wasn't typecast like that yeah, you know, I, something about Keanu Reeves, I really just don't think, I don't think he's that great of an actor. I don't think he has a, lar- a, a wide range uh, of roles and genres that he can actually play. But he's always been, like I said earlier, just like a likable personality. And even like the stories you hear about his life and whatnot, like, you know, yeah. you know like even like, like Paul Walker. Paul person. Walker, like no one's like, oh yeah, Paul Walker, is a, that's like one of America's greatest mm-hmm. actors ever, right? But... You know, everyone likes Paul Walker. The guy does, jiu- or he did jujitsu, and he, you know, he bought the ring, the the wedding ring for the the soldier, blah. And then we got Keanu Reeves, who just is more of the same, right? Like, I guess his wife, yeah, I, unless it's like some kind of fake meme, but his wife really did die of like cancer, right? And like, you know, I think I heard that. Yeah. And you know, he gives so much money to charity. And, he he you know, also was in a band. With his brother, it was um, and he does surf dog, I think, or something, something dog. You said that already, Ken. Paul Walker, but oh. but Keanu Reeves plays bass in a rock band. 
No, see, that's cool, man. He's such a cool guy. I, I, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to see him in more movies, right? Okay. I'd like to see him. Bo- bonus question. Who, in, their, in our lifetimes, who wins the Academy Award for Best Actor first? Keanu Reeves or Tom Cruise? Uh, Doesn't matter, has. Uh, Tom Cruise never won an nope. Academy Award? Not for Best Actor. Tom Cruise is going to mm. win one. I, I think he'll win. Tom Cruise is another guy who's like, his career has kind of uh, been revitalized, I think. You know, like, you know, he does all the own stunts for uh, the new Mission Impossibles and stuff. And he's a oh, yeah. Like, that's crazy. Scientology will do that to you. Like hanging on the plane and everything? I think he's that's crazy nuts. now. <laughs> that's crazy. It's crazy. Any uh, final comments or remarks before we close the show? Uh, yeah, he's a cool dude. That's that's your, <laughs> that's okay. your okay. Well, guys, thank you. I so basically much. said the thing that you guys just said for five minutes. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much for uh, oh tuning into our episode of Real Talk about Keanu Reeves. Once again, uh, Real Talk is brought to you by the fine folks at Tango Theaters, where you can watch a bunch of movies that they have uh, right now, including Into the Spider Verse, um, Escape Room, and just to name a few. Can we all say it together? Bye, everybody. Thanks, Missy. <laughs> I mean, Mom. <laughs> I mean, Mom. <laughs>